What I'm about to tell you is gonna make you wanna cancel your iCloud subscription immediately. In this video, we're gonna look at how Apple's photo management software is deliberately designed to keep your library cluttered, full of unneeded images, so that you keep paying for iCloud storage. We're gonna look at the secret workflows that photographers use to manage their libraries, and I'm gonna show you how to build your own open source simple toolkit that solves this problem completely because Apple are never gonna do it. This is the first video in a series where we're gonna go down the rabbit hole of building a free and open source photo management toolkit that runs on your own computer. It keeps you in control of your own library and crucially gives you these pro level culling tools that lets you curate your own photo library. We're gonna explore just how much value there is in a curated library as opposed to this endless stream of duplicates and screenshots and dud images that the Apple Photos ecosystem seems to encourage. Before I built this better system, I'd open Apple Photos to see my 16,000 odd images from the last few decades, and I'd just be presented with this stream of unfinished collections of images. So duplicates from where I you know, attempted a single shot, screenshots and duds and misses, and even photos I've taken to sell things on eBay from years ago were just filling my library. So what should be this kind of curated art gallery style experience has just turned into a frustrating digital dumping ground. And it occurred to me that this is not an accident. It's by design. So after really looking into this and trying to find out where these barriers are coming from, what it is that's missing that's preventing me from being able to quickly and easily cull my images and curate my library, it became clear to me that this is actually a subtle game of behavior management. By omitting this kind of functionality, Apple literally just make more money. They have such a tight grip on the storage, on charging for storage in their hardware ecosystem, and are obviously then filling that gap with their software through selling the iCloud storage, that if they omit a feature that increases your resistance to deleting a photo, even by a tiny bit, they just literally see this massive increase in the amount of money they make. So it's very clear why this is the situation it is. I'd love to hear your take on this. Do you share my views here that, that Apple have this unbelievable grip on charging for storage and it is just extended right the way through to all of the software in the system and it just seems very insidious to me. As with any new rabbit hole, I love to jump into a community in an attempt to extract the secret wisdom from that community and then bring it back and apply it to my own day-to-day -day workflows. So here I jumped into the professional photography community to try and see how they deal with this problem of, of you know thousands of images. How do they get rid of the ones they don't want? And of course, being professionals, they have a very fast and efficient way of doing this. So they call it culling um, and they use professional grade software for this process. Things like Photo Mechanic that make this process incredibly fast and powerful. These tools are quite expensive and probably a little bit overkill for just managing your own personal photo library. But I wanted to see exactly the details of how those tools are presented, uh, you know, why they're so efficient. And it, it sort of, it seems clear to me there are two basic workflows that they offer that are totally absent from Apple Photos. The first is just the ability to rapidly flick through a series of images and mark images for rejection with a keyboard shortcut. You have to be able to do all of this from the keyboard. Of course, I'm a keyboard enthusiast. Uh, you know, these, key, these sort of fast bulk workflows, essential to be able to do this all from a keyboard. So just sort of flicking through, uh, looking at thumbnails, jumping in to see them full size, jumping in to see them 100% uh, size and easily use a keyboard shortcut to reject them. This is missing from Apple Photos. The second workflow is this idea of uh, choosing a pick from a bunch of candidates. So if you are trying to get a shot and you might take 10 or 15 pictures, uh, you know, portrait type shots, and you know there's gonna be, one, hopefully there's gonna be one good one in that collection, you need a very fast, confident way of finding the best to reject the others. Otherwise you just end up with this sea of duplicates in your library and I really hate that. And this is completely missing from Apple Photos. So what the pro software will let you do is select a bunch of pictures and then choose one as a pick. And then you can see that side by side with the others in that collection. And that's just such a critical part of this process because without the side by side comparison, you're never gonna have that confidence, that sense of confidence that you need to be able to say you want all of the rest deleted. And as you can see, these are not complicated workflows. They're just very simple and very targeted. There's a specific routine here that works and it's been obviously omitted from Apple Photos. It's interesting to note at this point that Apple used to have pro-level software called Aperture that had these kinds of tools, but they stopped developing it and they killed it off. And I think that's quite telling. There are more clues as well that Apple are fully aware of the depth of this problem. And in true Apple style, they turn it into a way to convince you to buy new phones. So rather than solving the problem directly in a way that results in you using less storage, they solve it in this kind of fake way with solutions like bundling duplicate pictures. If you've taken a 
the burst of pictures to get a portrait, they'll just bundle them up together. So it looks like it's been solved, but it hasn't resulted in less storage used. And then there's all these AI features that generate memories and galleries and videos and things from all of your collection, which again, don't result in any less storage used, but they will surface uh, hopefully the better kind of images to you. So you're, you're sort of always suggested that you can solve this problem just by buying the latest phone with all of these features but of course you're still paying for all of that storage in the background as well so this is a smoking gun that just really demonstrates how clever and subtle this whole game is you could look at this of course in the way apple want you to and see this as a real convenience feature you know you never have to delete your pictures you don't have to spend any time at all curating or deleting because it will do it for you the problem with this is that there's a bigger cost to this than just the money the more cluttered your library is no matter how many ai tools they throw at this the more it works against the one thing that would make your photos truly meaningful, and that's this sense of curation. You end up paying more for a convenience feature that works directly against achieving that experience that you really want from this. So if we think about how we got here, Apple for decades have sold their base model iPhones with very restrictive built-in storage and then charged a huge premium for the larger versions. They've trained us to accept storage constraints in our devices, and then they offer iCloud as the solution. But but of course, it's not a solution, it's a subscription. They've hobbled the hardware to create recurring revenue. Physical storage shouldn't be a technical restriction in 2025. This is a business strategy decades in the making. It is worth noting that iCloud Photo Library is actually a pretty amazing technical achievement. What it does is quite remarkable, but when it doesn't work or you have a problem with it, you realize that putting that much trust in this cloud-based automated system is quite a problem. And this became very apparent to me when I tried to use their feature that lets you combine your library with another person's library. So I connected mine to my wife's. And then I ended up having some issues with it. And I wanted to backpedal from the whole thing. And I ended up canceling my iCloud subscription at that point as well. Um, and there's this documented feature. This remarkably isn't actually a bug. There is this feature that says if you're in this situation, after a certain period of time has elapsed and you opt out of this system, it leaves all of your photos in the other person's library. It just chucks them in there and leaves them in there with no easy way of deleting them or extracting them. This was just mind blowing to me and I actually had to spend ages going through my wife's library deleting all of my pictures and it was that moment that really started this I wanted, I wanted uh, to come up with a better system here. And that's what's led me to build this photo management toolkit that Apple won't. So the system I have here is file system based. It runs on my Mac, um, but amazingly, because it uses web servers and a web-based interface, the entire thing is actually accessible from any device on my own local network as well. So I can still enjoy my library from my iPad, even though this is all stored on a hard drive connected to my Mac. It has face detection support. So it's categorized all of my pictures by detecting faces. And this is wildly accurate and incredibly impressive. I can quickly create a gallery based on a, you know, a face and I can quickly create galleries based on date ranges as well. And what's amazing is when I create a gallery, it actually creates a real folder on my hard drive with hard links to the original in that. This is amazing. It doesn't use any extra space as a result of creating this gallery of folders. So I can have the same image in multiple galleries and know that it doesn't take up any space on my hard drive. And then with those folders, I can either just delete them knowing that the originals are going to be untouched, or I can use them as a way of quickly sharing or uploading that collection of images or doing other command line tools on that folder. Um, so it's real ownership and real power. And what's amazing about this was I built this using Claude code for about $100. And I think this just just perfectly represents this really interesting position we find ourselves in with computing now. Things like Claude Code let people without deep programming backgrounds create amazing workflows, even to the point of building enjoyable, pleasant interfaces and experiences that run in things like a web browser app. This is really just this AI revolution where it's democratizing command line tools in a way that we've never seen before. There are so many powerful open source libraries available on the command line, but putting them all together and turning them into a workflow is generally very difficult. And open source projects that do that and actually claim to sort of have a complete workflow, a complete application, tend to look a little bit clunky. Whereas now we can just build the tools we want in the way that we want them to look as well. This is just all very fascinating. When we see Apple doing what they're doing with the new Mac OS uh, UI conventions, just doubling down on the polish and the interface, we've then got this AI channel where 
real power user workflows can be just built by the person who needs them to their exact specification. This is just drastically changing the entire way that personal computers can be used the way I see it. Over the next few videos, I'm gonna look deeper at my photo management tool, the design choices I put into it, how it works in detail, as well as explore how Claude Code works and how impressive it is and how transformative it is for normal people using personal computers. If you've enjoyed my take on this, you'll love what I do in my day job, which is working on Setseed CMS, which is a web content and user management platform. If you want to level up your online website or customer workflows, give me or Chris a shout at setseed.com. We have a small team, but we have a world-leading solution.